welcome back to the Lost Artistry Lash channel. My name's Caitlin Elford and today we have Ashley on set. She is on Instagram at Wild Coast Beauty Bar. So Ashley is on the newer side of her lash journey and she has many questions that are super, super common. So if you're a new lash artist, you are going to love this video. A lot of artists have these exact questions. So today we're gonna work through them. We're gonna troubleshoot through all of her questions. So just to run through the list a little bit, give you an idea of what we're gonna be talking about. We are gonna work through how to deal with watery eyes, how to really get in close to that lash line, particularly on the inner corners. So we're gonna focus a lot on isolation hacks and really getting a closer placement to that base. Also being able to really clearly see what you're working on. So some little tips and tricks on that. Ashley would like to learn how to tape the inner corners. So we're gonna troubleshoot through that as well. And knowing how to push your lash weights and lengths. So there are tricks for that. Maybe your client, even though they have weak natural lashes, if they ask for length, you can give it to them. We're also gonna run through how to direct the lashes and how to prevent the lash extensions from curing too fast. That's also known as blanching or blooming. And we also wanna make sure that we can get rid of the water if your client does in fact start watering. And we're also gonna run through how to prevent the lashes from shock curing. So if you're new to our YouTube channel, go ahead, click that like, subscribe, ring that bell, and don't forget to give our girl Ashley a follow on Instagram as well. While Ashley is working through her set, I'm just gonna walk you through our assessment. So we always use the Procreate app when we're planning on our set, and we've had Ashley's model send us three different photos of her eyes. We have one of both of her eyes looking forward, and we always do this with no makeup on. Eyes looking forward, side angle looking down, and then a close up of just one of the eyes. The reason why we do this is because we can see every single angle of the eye in order to really assess all parts of our model and determine which curls, which lengths, which style will best suit our client. So I'm really gonna dive into a full assessment of her right now for you. So we do this before the client comes in because this takes a lot of time and sometimes you scribble things out, try new things and really go back and look at it again and again to figure out exactly what style will work best for your client. So today Ashley is doing a hybrid lash set. She is working with a mix of classics and flat lashes and the reason why she's doing that is because we have lots of finer lashes mixed throughout our really strong natural lashes. So our client likes tons of texture and a little more on the dramatic side of lashes. So we wanted to keep them as dark as possible, but while still keeping our lashes really healthy. So in order to do that, we worked with our longer lengths being all the way up to 15 millimeters and our shortest length going down to seven millimeters. So the reason why we mix our flats and classics together was because flat lashes actually offer 40% less weight than standard classic lashes. So Ashley's a little bit nervous about doing really long lengths and compromising the integrity of the natural lash, which is good. That's a great trait to have. But there are tricks, like you can use longer lengths in a smaller diameter or by switching to that flat lash because it does offer less weight. So the reason why we chose longer lengths for our model today is because if you check out here, she has quite a lot of space between her lash line and her eyebrows. So there's lots of room to fill in there. So another reason why we wanted to choose longer lengths was because our client has deep set eyes. So you can see here that the brow bone kind of sits out just a little bit further than that lash line. So in order to make the lashes stand out further and pull the appearance of the eye out a little bit, we needed additional length. So that's why we're gonna choose longer lengths. It's gonna look beautiful on her. And we actually chose to stick with a C slash CC curl mix. Reason why we're mixing curls is just to keep a little bit of texture and avoid the extensions from hitting that brow bone at the top. If we worked with say D curl, DD curl, anything like that, then we would risk actually curling the extensions into this brow bone. So less curl and longer lengths for deep set eyes is a really great idea. 
So that's what we're working with. Lengthwise, we're going from seven millimeters all the way up to 15, and we are gonna feather our lengths all throughout. So throughout every single section, we're gonna have multiple lengths. So in our 15 millimeter section, we're gonna have 13, 14, 12s in there. In our 11 millimeter section, we're gonna have some 10s, some nines, and we're just gonna keep feathering all the way throughout. That's gonna add more darkness and additional texture as well. Now, when it comes to our pre-fan lashes, because we are doing hybrids, we want to A, steer clear of using fans that are super wide on the outer corner. The reason for that is because our client has wider set eyes, so in order to avoid elongating the eyes, we're going to work with an open eye mapping, more of like a doll eye. It's a mix between a doll and an open eye, actually, because the sections aren't quite big enough for a doll eye, but still a little bit bigger than I would say would be standard for an open eye. But this is the fun thing about mapping. You can mix and match all of them together. But as I was saying, because we're not trying to elongate that outer corner and draw the eyes apart at all, we're going to lift everything up on the outer corner. And how we're gonna do that is by working with direction. So just check on my arrows here. On the outer corner, we're directing everything up. And if we use really wide fans, we're gonna accidentally elongate that outer corner versus if we work with narrow fans, such as long stem fans, but in today's case, we're gonna work with 3D fans because they're always narrow when you're working with pre-fans, I should say. So we're gonna work with 3D fans on those outer corners and direct them up. And then in the middle of the eye, we're working with a mix of 3D and 7D. And our 7Ds are just gonna add extra fluff and texture just in this section. So we're only gonna be working with 13, 14, 12, 13, 14, and 15 millimeters in this section in our 7Ds. Then as we move more toward the inner corner, with our classics, we're gonna direct more towards the nose just to really bring that eye in a little bit. But we are gonna go all the way down to seven millimeters because we wanna make sure we get all the way to the inner corner. If we forgot those inner corners, then it would, it would actually look like there was more space between the eyes, which we obviously don't wanna do. So we wanna get all the way to that inner corner, every single lash that we can get to. So we wanna be really strategic with that. So that is kind of our mapping today. Now, I will note that our client does have semi-downturned lashes, but because there's not a lot of space between the lash line and that upper brow, we are steering clear of that D or DD curl and sticking towards that C and CC curl instead. So although sometimes we do learn that with downturned lashes, we do need a lot of lift, but in this particular example, she's unique and everyone needs something different. So we are gonna stick with that C and CC curl only. So I'm really excited to see Ashley bring this set to life. address how to deal with watery eyed clients, how to prevent that. So first thing we do is we keep the lights off while we're placing the iPads. Second thing is apply the iPads with the eyes closed. The eyes are much more relaxed and chill if they're closed. If they're looking up, then they can see the pads coming in and that promotes watering as well. So applying the iPads with the eyes closed and starting your lights either off or on just setting number one. You'll want an adjustable setting lash light. Lost Artistry lash lights have five settings. I would suggest starting it on setting number one and then slowly easing them into the lights because all of a sudden having an abrupt light come on can force the client's eyes to water. But what if the eyes water anyways? So if that happens, you're gonna take your glue wipe, you're gonna fold it over itself. You can even do that into fours if you want. And then you're going to hold it on the outside of the eye and that's going to absorb the tears. Ideally, we won't have to do that because we're gonna take precautionary steps in 
not having the eyes water. Another thing is if our clients are sensitive to glue fumes, maybe it's not the light, it could be the fumes. Having Freshy, which is a product that absorbs the glue fumes into the bottle, having that laid on the side of you while you're working will help take the glue fumes away from the eyes, lessening that irritation and having it sucked into the bottle. It's also nice for you as the artist because you don't have to breathe in as many glue fumes either. And Ashley just brought up that her eye pads are getting a little bit gelatin. So maybe her eyes are a little bit watery underneath the eye pads. So we wanna prevent actually scraping the eyes with the eye pads or keeping that irritation going because that's gonna help the client water as well. So I'm gonna show Ashley and you guys obviously how to move the eye pads while you're working. So maybe it's a good time to focus on the inner corner get through some of those inner corners. I'll show you how to move the pad and then we'll lash some of those inner corners. We're gonna get really close to that lash line too. So we've got a little sticky here, constantly checking to see if we have those is a really good idea so that at the end of the service, we don't have to go back and pull them all off. And because I have a little sticky, I just wanna make sure that it's not stuck to any other lashes around, which it is. So I wanna remove that before we send the client home. And how I'm gonna do that is by gripping two of the extensions, kind of pulling them apart and finding the natural lash that's stuck together. And usually when I have a sticky like that, it means that the placement's a little bit off. So mm -hmm. having a quick look from the side to see if that base is perfectly flush with the natural lash is a good idea. And it is not. So we can probably slide that one off. Let me know if this hurts you, okay? Not quite gliding off, but it is gonna pop off eventually anyway. So I'm just gonna hold on to the base of the natural lash and the base of the extension. Just can't gently glide those apart. There you go. So we're looking for the gelatin. And if we see gelatin, building around the eye pads, then that means that the pads are probably a little bit too close, which they're slipping, and that was one of your questions. When the lash, when the pads slip, totally normal. If your client's pads are slipping, it likely has something to do with them either talking, like sometimes talking can, can make that happen, not that you were talking. Um, also, like we could have clients who have really round cheeks, or when they smile, even if they give a little smile, their cheeks kind of pop the pads up a little bit. And that's inevitable. We wanna connect with our clients. We want them to have some expression. We don't have, want them to have to sit there and look completely dead or asleep the whole time. So if that happens, no problem. We'll just move our iPads and keep, continue going. So I'm gonna take those off, lifting the lid. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Lifting that lid. I'm gonna get rid of that gelatin. And then I find sometimes, especially if we have struggles with say the inner or outer corner, getting really close to that lash line, mm -hmm. then we can place it covering just the inner or outer corner and then you can kind of move the pad from there. So because we were working through the inner corner, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm just covering the lashes just on that inner corner and you can see the rest is completely exposed. Believe it or not, even though this looks weird, it's gonna help the client from watering as well because the pads can be a little bit irritating. So even though it looks like it's kind of poking, mm -hmm. you'll just get those lashes and then you'll move to the outer corner and you'll kind of move it back and forth. So we'll do the same thing on this side, just make sure we don't have any stickies. So now there's many methods that you can use. You can pull back with one finger and hold using one of your fingers to get in there and see those lashes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna move your client's head a bunch too. So sometimes I have to move around, sometimes the client has to move around. You can use a free nail, obviously making sure your hands are really clean to get in there. And when we're directing the lashes, we may only make a millimeter or so of connection with the natural lash and the extension. And that's okay, as long as that base is perfectly flush with the natural lash, it'll last. I'm gonna do that same thing on this eye. Tilt to the side so that I can see the side because when I can see the side of the natural lash, then I can really see where I'm placing it and how that base is if it's flush with the natural lash. So moving them in the weirdest angle from side to side. And I might only use one tip of my tweezers to isolate. Again, I have a finger holding the lid to the side. I find that if I pick up my extension in such a way that it's already on the angle that I need to apply, that that helps me too. 
and direct. So when you are directing the extensions, you place the base and then you can move the extension from side to side. Do that again, find another one. And if we look from the side like this too, then you can really see if there's any hidden lashes at all. And you wanna make sure with classic lashes that you're using a slower cure time glue because you need time to direct the extensions, almost always. So instead of using, say, Quickie, maybe Bondage or Sensitize is the go because you want that extra couple seconds just to move it around and direct it. For fans, I feel like because they do overlap, they kind of make up for not having proper direction, if that is the case. But for classics, you can't get away with it at all. Direction is very, very important. Now, if we were to use tape, I like to tear the tape in half and pull it up and to the side. When you pull it up, it isolates the lashes for you. But I find when you just pull it to the side, it doesn't do that. But if you pull up and out, it does. Also getting your client, like I've, like you've seen, like moving her head back and forth and up and down, like the chin back, moving the chin back or forward, depending on how they're laying, can really help. So if I say, okay, chin back a little bit, then I can really see that base yeah. a lot better than if the chin was down. And people naturally want to do that. They want to put their chin down. There's a little tiny invisible hair there. See that thing? Mm -hmm. That little guy? Yeah. That's why I couldn't make that connection. I had to move it out of the way, and that's why lighting is so important. Because those, everyone has those, and they're so hard to see, and you just would be like, oh, I'm not getting good retention, like why isn't it sticking? But if you don't have proper lighting, then you wouldn't see that that's actually a little invisible hair that's getting in the way. Same thing over here. So even with the tape, I sometimes will use my finger just to find the lash, and then once you find it and have it isolated, it usually stays. Mm -hmm. Same thing, when I looked from the top for this lash, it looked like I had only one lash, and then I looked from the side and there was a little baby hair falling into my section. I also find that for newer artists, and you might not do this, I haven't noticed you doing it, but, but it'd be worth even still bringing up, but when you push in on the pads a little bit, it actually doesn't do any good because it's poking the pads up on other sides, so like maybe the inner corner will start popping up if you actually push pressure in here. Mm -hmm. See how the pad moves a little bit? Yeah. Versus if you just hover, the pads don't move at all, and that'll, prevent, that'll help prevent them from slipping into the eyes too. Yeah. So just really just having, like the tips can touch the pads, but not putting any pressure on there whatsoever. <music>
and prefan pickup and application. That's just her tweezer of choice. So by using that really nice curvature, she's able to isolate much easier and work around that deep set eye much better as well. Also, you'll notice that the pads are tilted just so we're covering that inner corner. We are getting that inner corner out of the way and especially with deep set eyes, those inner corners are even harder. So by moving the pads, we're able to really see in there and get all of those lashes in a much less stressful way. So we just talked about this off film, but I was talking to Ashley about picking up your classic lash in such a way that you are preparing for laying the extension. So Ashley, if you wanna give a little bit of a tutorial on that. So if she needs to place the extension, say. Well here I'm, I need to place them kind of on an angle here. Like I gotta place it down. Here, yeah. I gotta get one isolated so I can. So she's planning it out. So she's figuring out exactly how she has to place the extension in order for that base to become completely flush with the natural lash. And then she's gonna pick up her extension on whatever angle she needs to place it on. So she's kind of changing up the way that she's picking up her lashes along the way. Sometimes I have to see it first. Yeah, so what you can also do, exactly what she's doing right now. So she took an extension and before dipping it, she's just seeing how she has to hold her hand and she can go lay that lash back down and come back and pick it up again and then dip it and place it. And guys, yes, this takes a lot of time in the beginning, but the beginning is where you learn these hacks and it takes a long time and then before you know it, it becomes second nature. So you don't always have to think about this for the next forever. You just have to put in the work in the beginning, take some time, be open and honest with your clients and then before you know it, it just comes. I realized I had to move my what tweezer I was using. Well, there you go, see? Now you need to have double tweezers on hand. And that's another thing too, the tweezer that you use is everything. So maybe for the inner corners, the 45 degree tweezer isn't your tweezer. Maybe the curved isolation or the crane tweezer is your inner corner tweezer because it has finer tips so you can really easily maneuver in around there. Yeah. So that's another thing. So you need to find what tweezer works for you. And even though sometimes you'll probably buy a tweezer and you're like, ah, oh, someone said this was awesome, but it sucks for me. Um, it's all a part of the, the game and you just eventually find the right tweezer for you and once you find it, you got it and it was worth it. Bye.